Alison Pryor and I teach acrylic paintings for beginners and all levels and today I'm going to teach you this beautiful painting. It's an acrylic painting and it's a girl in a yellow dress and she has a beautiful view of some mountains and I will teach you how to paint distant mountains, that beautiful sky that is gorgeous and so easy and we have a big old bush over there and some beautiful grass and I'll show you how to make those little tiny strings of grass. And the, see the shadows in her legs and the shadows in her dress. I'll show you all that today. This is a great video for all levels. And if you've got a bit of experience, that will help even better. So let's get started. So today I have a 16 by 20 canvas and I'm going to put on there a beautiful landscape with the girl standing and overlooking the view. So I think you'll love this painting today. It's a little different and you'll learn new techniques. Let's get started. So today I'm going to use my primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. And I have green, burnt umber, black, and white. These are liquid, oh, right. and I like those because they're easy to work with, I find. So take out a few of your brushes, like your flat brushes. Like there, I have a flat brush here, and I have a bristle brush, and a liner brush, and a fan brush. These are all brushes that I use most of the time anyway. So I always have these handy. and if, So you can use your chisel. So the first brush. thing we'll do is make our sky. You can make your sky blue. And I'm just going to put white and blue together. And my blue is uh, ultramarine blue and just pure white. Uh, I can, this is a tantanium white. So just put on your blue sky. I don't have it all completely blended. See how I just left? See how that white is coming through that blue there? Isn't that pretty? That kind of gives you clouds, automatic clouds. See? So what I do, you can put some blue on your brush and then some white. Anywhere at all. Just sort of just put the two of them on there like that. And then you'll get all these really nice... Look! Isn't that nice? See that? It gets clouds automatically, instantly. All right. Now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mist it with my magic white because I'm noticing that it's starting to dry too so fast. I just put some magic white in my misting bottle. I have the recipe link below. And you use the recipe and then you add water. So all you have to do is get your recipe and put about a third of it in there and then the rest of water. Now I'm after using a lot of it there now, but uh, about a third and then the rest of water. Okay. All right, just mist enough on there to, you don't want it to stay wet for hours and hours because you got a lot of, you know, you've got things you want to do with it. But you can always use a hair dryer if it gets too wet. But that's magic white and that will keep it nice and just watch how it blends beautifully. Look, what a difference. I always say that because it's true. I mean, anybody used it knows. It's just something I made up for acrylic paints. It was for... So uh, Bob Ross used it for, Bob Ross and, and his teacher Bill Alexander, they used it for their oils so they could brighten up their colors and all kinds of things. It, look how beautiful it is. Look. You will see the difference. You will feel it. Especially on bigger canvases like this because I'm going like, to separate those colors just like it is. Isn't that gorgeous? And uh, so that's just a matter of you can do it this way if you want. You can put a blue on a corner of your brush and white on the other corner like that and then look I got lots of paint and then you can just brush it out try to put the blue side up and that way you'll get oh nice oh it's gorgeous isn't it look at that you can put some more up here wherever you want it doesn't have to be perfect because it's the sky and skies do all kinds of nice things. Look, I'm just playing. But I don't want to lose that white that I got there. It looks like clouds. Try not to go over them. Look, try not to go over them too much. You don't want to smooth it all out. Don't smooth it all out in one. All right. Let's add a little bit of pink down the bottom. I'm going to add a bit of red to one corner of my brush and white on the other end. And I'm going to make lots of white, a little bit of pink, because red is very, very 
Uh, you know what? I think I'll add a little bit of yellow to it too. I know. I love having fun with color. So I'm going to put the uh, white on the bottom and the red in there. Oh wow, look at that. Now that's nice. It's almost like a rainbow. Now I'm not going to get any more color. I'm going to just go get white. Okay? Had a bit of blue mixed in there. It's fine. You don't want to get too green though. Be careful with that. And because you have the magic white on, it'll blend in with that blue without without making too much of a without losing too much of your blue. Look at that, isn't that pretty? So just keep adding some white at the bottom there now. Good. Just keep adding white. Alright, that will brighten it up nicely. Pretty. I missed it again a little bit. Like I said, where I add a lot of, you know, water to the magic white, it'll dry a little faster, which is what I want. Okay. But look, we got some color. Isn't that pretty? Now leave the white. If you get some white, keep it. Okay, keep that white. I'm just going to... I'm trying not to blend it all too much. All I'm trying to do is get that, those two lines to trans, to go back into each other. See how it all looks like one? It all like the blue sky came down and, a, and a, the, the bottom sky started to get a lighter color. Nice. All right, I'm one. I'm, I am bad for going over stuff, so I'm just trying to keep it. So I'm. All right, let's add a few clouds. You can use the same brush if you like. Now we already have clouds, so we don't need to do anything with those. But what I want to do is I'm going to pick up some white on the corner of my brush, and I'm just going to add a few little extra ones on top of what I already did. Just put the corner of my brush. I'm just wiggling my brush around. Look, I'm not doing very much. See how pretty that is? Just by not doing very much at all. Okay, so corner of my brush. Just picking out some places where I'd like to have a few extra clouds. You can tap it on too if you like. See that? See how I got... Look. Isn't that nice? Put one underneath the other one just to give it some... Or even on the side here. Look at that. Now that's pretty, isn't it? Hmm? Don't need to do much else with that, actually. You know, it's up to you if you want to add a little more, but don't go over what you did. Like, see that white? All that white and then it even has some blue in it? Don't go back over that. Do not, do not go back and smooth it out. Nothing. Just leave it as it is. And if you want to define something up here, just go on top of what you that white that you got to keep, and just tap. Um, I'm not even bar I'm barely touching the I'm barely touching the canvas. But look, it's so simple. And take your time. I find people are rushing through their paintings. Take your time. There's no rush. Tap tap tap. Look tap tap tap. Look, it's on top of what we already did. I'm just coming down a little lower here just to give a kind of like little floating clouds. So that's on top of the white that we left there, okay? Maybe there's another one here. We gotta leave some room here for, uh, for some hills. All right. So that's just the corner, the same brush that I used to put my sky up. Nice little, nice little brush for that. Works pretty good. Little cloud there, just you picking up on the corner of my brush, just pure white because this is still a bit wet. So you can just touch the very corner of your brush, barely, barely touching, and just move it along, move it along, just move it along, and don't go back over what you just did. Just move it along, okay? So there's a few little clouds. I don't think I'm going to bother with anymore, but that's pretty simple. Now we're going to let that dry and then we're going to add some hills, distant hills, and then as they come forward, you'll see how to make distant hills. Let's make some distant mountains. Draw them out. You can use chalk if you like. So I don't want to lose all my colors that I made, so I'm going to put 
with some hills up here. I'm just going to make different shapes. Come down and up. You know, make some different shapes. That's all. Maybe there's one up here. Small one up there. So just have your shape there for your mountains. And then we will fill that in with a light color. So now you can get a smaller brush. Because they're distant and we want them nice and light, we are going to make our blue. We're going to make a light purple and a bit of red. Light blue. Or blue and red, okay, for purple color. And then white. More white than both of those together. A little more purple. And you got to watch that red. It's really dominant. I should fill, do it. Fill that in. And then we're going to go with a bit more white because I want them really light in the background so that I can show you that they're distant. Show you how to make distant cloud, uh, distant mountains. So we got our shape. So now we're just filling it in. Add more white. Really don't want them to be too dark at all. So all you have to do is fill it all in. didn't. See, drawing out the shape first really helps a lot. You can go over that chalk if you want, because chalk is easy to come off. It's okay. Good. I didn't put any more magic white on there. I don't need it now because we're only doing a small area. All right, mix up a little more paint if you need it. See how nice that shape is coming out there? That purpley look there now, isn't that nice? So you can put on your color and it was too dark. Just go over it with white, that's all. You know, some people worry about, oh, I lost the color. Well, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. And if, if you want to change the color a little bit, just add a bit of... You know, if you want to get it more purplish color or the blue color, it doesn't matter because it's mountains and they change color and uh, with the sunlight and with the surrounding atmosphere. So not to worry, okay? So that's your background mountains. And what we're going to do is we are going to give it a little bit of a light side. So I'm going to go with the sun coming in through these clouds from the right. So the right side of the mountains will be a bit lighter. So to help you get the shape of the mountains, you can put in your squiggly lines. Right, so just a couple of squiggly lines, just to get some shape. This will help you be able to, it kind of keeps you in control of where you want your lights, okay? So just a few little squiggly lines and then add more white to that color that you made there. Add more white to it, like so it's really bright. We're not adding snow or anything, we're just adding light to one side of the mountain, okay? Just to give it a shape. This will give it a shape. Even though we're going over this mountain with the darker mountain, still want to be able to add... I'm just going to bring a little bit down here in case there was a little bit there. Shape up your mountains, whatever you feel comfortable. And there we go, a little bit. See how it gives it a bit of shape? See? You don't always need a knife to do mountains. All right. I like using chalk because I can go over it, see? So we're just getting some of these shapes in here.
like a mountain. Good. Now you can let that dry, or you can dry it with a hair dryer, and then we're going to go over that with. I'm just filling in some of the bottoms so here. You just play around with it till you get the shape you're looking for. I know if you're not used to making mountains, then it's hard to, to get those shapes, isn't it? It's always a bit hard to get mountain shapes unless you. I find it easier when I use those squiggly lines. It really helps me, keeps me under control. And then if I want to move, if I want to move some of that back here, I can. I can smooth out that edge if I want to, right? But you'll always still have that shape. See? See? You'll still have that shape. See? All right. Now we get some mountains in the back. Now we're going to have a mountain in the front. So you can wait for that to dry. Probably just make some shape. Okay, I'm gonna go up here, and then we're gonna go a big one, just to make it as so you can see that this is the the mountain in the front. All right. Now. And then the front's going to be much darker. So you're going to make a nice dark color. So you got the purplish color there, so that's good. So now we'll add blue, a bit of red, and some white. And so we have a nice dark color in the front. All right. So we'll fill that in with our dark color. And you will see. So that will push those other mountains back. I might even come over here a little bit just to. All right, and then I'm going to shape that up. So those lines are just for a guide, and then you can shape them up whatever way you want. All right. There we go. Nice big one here to show the distance. That will help get the distance of your mountains. I don't want it to be. Two, I want to be a little more round than that on top. All right, so I'm going to shape that up a little more round. Maybe give it another little round one here. See how I change that up a little bit? So you can do that. Just because you made a, a shape, don't mean you can't change it. Especially when you use chalk, because you know you can make changes easily. But make sure that when you change the shape that you're happy with it because if you've got to change it too much and you lose your background mountains, then it's hard to get them back. All right, so, so let's do the that. same thing here. Just make a couple little squiggly lines where you want. Start at the peak and then make your line. All right. Oh, mine is still a bit wet there now. So, But make a couple of squiggly lines just to help you out. Now you All take right. up your white. You want a dirty brush, that's fine. And then we're going to go with the light again on this side, okay? So we'll just brighten it up here. And we'll just stay with, I'm going to stay with the line. And I'm just going to try to lighten up some of that without, might even put one here. Even though I didn't do a squiggly line. <laughs> Join it up with that one. And when you come out, you come back, it gives you a really nice sh shape when you go back like that. Like, say, there's your squiggly line there. And then you go, move back if you want to, see? Move back. Nice. All right. So, you're getting your nice mountains there now. As you can see how you got now your distant mountains. All right. Another one back here. Another one here. You can go back if you want a little bit. A little bit here. See? They're pretty, aren't they? And so simple. See how easy it was? It was pretty easy, wasn't it? Huh? Good. So that's how you make the distant mountains. You can even put even lighter ones back there if you want to. Even lighter again, 
almost white so you can barely see it. And then if you want it even closer, you can make almost black mountains. But as long as they're darker as they come forward. See? So, you know, if you wanted to make some extra ones in the background, it had to be really, really light. Right? So you could barely see them. So you don't want very much paint on your brush. It's almost like an illusion of there's something back there. Make a few shapes. Just put in a little something in the back. But you don't need to do that because you're, you know, you can have one or two layers of mountains if you want. Don't need a big pile of them. Right? So I'm just doing that. And I have a little bit of background there. Just That's just to give you an idea of like how many mountains you can do, you know, but they have to be really, really faded out in the back or they're going to spoil what you already did. So I'm just kind of really lightly trying to show you. Right, so, so you can barely see it. You put a little bit of highlight on the edge and then you'll be able to see it better. It's hard to see because we don't want to see it. It's just way in the background. Way back. Okay, so I'm just doing two layers basically and probably a little bit of a third one back there. So if you can see that, that's great. So you can see it back there. See? Right? Hard to see it on that side because I didn't want to put out too many. But there's, you know, you can see a third one here way light. And then all your layers. Nice. I think that's nice to you. Cool. Let's take off our tape. Take off our tape. And now you can see, actually see the mountains. Alright, so take off that. And then we're going to decide what we want down here. So I'm thinking maybe some grass where we can stand our little girl. And probably a tree or two. Right. So what we'll do is we'll make some water here, okay, and uh, so we'll make some water here, and we just use our flat brush, same brush, we don't need to change our brushes many times, and we'll just get some blue paint, and we will get some of our blue and our white, we'll just add some blue. It's going back and forth here like this. Now. something like you did with the uh, cloud, with the sky. That way you'll get some different... Yeah, you can put blue on one side. Because you want a reflection of the sky anyway, right? See? And you can go and do the same thing. Try to keep your horizon line as straight as you can, if you can. Okay. And just go back and forth until you come down as far as you want. Until you come down to your grass. If your paint is hard to move, I'm finding my paint is starting to dry a little bit, so you can use um, your Magic White. Okay. That will go really nice. Look at that. Love it. All right. You can do the sides of your canvas also as you're painting along. Just go around the sides if you're using a stretch canvas. That's what I'm using, a stretch canvas. So we have, depends on where you want your grass. There we go. Just 
trying to get a little reflection from the sky. Maybe there's a little bit of that yellow and red in there just to, uh, I'm just, I'm not even mixing it. Look, and some white. Okay, so I never even mix it. Let's see what happens. I don't even know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's probably going to turn green. Where would that be? That would be, that's the sky up there will come in, so that would be closer to the mountains. Okay. I kind of like that little bit of color in there. That's nice, isn't it? Nice for a change. Nothing wrong with that, sure. Try to keep some of the blue. Kind of like that like it is, do you? That's pretty, isn't it? Maybe there was a few clouds. Uh, you can see some clouds. Just touch the corner of your brush into white and just kind of mimic a little bit of cloud going on there. Don't have to worry about it too much. All right, and then you got the mount that that mountain there. But um, you can have a reflection, or you don't have to have a reflection. Okay, you know if you want a reflection, just put in the dark, get some blue, and just add a little bit of lines coming in here, and mimic that top there a little bit, and then pull it over. You don't really need to. It's just an illusion, right? Same with here. Just tap on a little bit of your blue, a little tip here, just sort of to get the tip of the hill, the mountain, and same with here and here, right? So we're trying, we don't want to have too much. So I'm going to blend it in a bit more, right? I'm just experimenting now too, so, because I never practiced this before. I'm just making it up as I go along. With, a, with the help of a few uh, reference photos of hills and things, but they're not even the same at all, right? I'm just, I need a picture in front of me, but uh, it's not going to be exactly the same. I'll even show you. This is a, a picture I got from Pixabay, and you can see it's not exactly the same, but it helps me. It helps me, you know, decide where I want things to go. So, you know, I just want to show you that so you know that I'm not trying to fool you in any way. I am doing, I am making it up out of my head as I look at my reference photos. So that's a good lesson for you too. So you can look at reference photos, but you still make up your own. Sometimes it takes a little more experience. Do little touch-ups, you know, so I kind of like that. Now let's go with some grass. Now you can do your grass with any bristle brush. I find bristles are good, especially when you're tap, tap, tapping. I always say as soon, as soon as you know you're going to tap, 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 make sure your brush is bristle. You can use a flat bristle. You could use a round bristle like this if you like. And I'm going to try it because I don't use this very often, but I want to dip into my green. Where are you? Green with a little bit of red. And I'm going to... Because I put the red in there to tone down green so it looks more earthy. I'm just going to tap that on there. Now see, see what happens? Look at all that. Look at all that texture. All that texture. So keep that going. Nice earthy green with a little bit of red. That's how that happens. That's how it happens. Oh, look at that nice little, I just had a little bit too much red and look how nice that came out. That was a nice little happy accident. Wasn't it, Bob? Wasn't it, Bob? Here's Bob. Let's make some nice little clouds that just float around and have fun all day. <laughs> we got our clouds done, Bob. Yep. Yeah. Float around and have fun all day. Doesn't that sound like fun? <laughs> oh my. Just look at this grass. How nice it's coming out. Just by tapping on a round bristle brush or, or a flat bristle brush. As long as it got bristles, you're going to be able to get really, really nice. Oh, look at those. Oh wow, look at that gorgeous red going in there. I'm just kind of dipping into my red and my green. So I'm just going into my green and I'm just kind of just jumping into my red 
and I might be getting a little bit too much and it's turning out to be perfect. I want that red there now. Now I want it there. So I'm going to add more red now. Look, look, woo! Love it, love it. Now some green. I like it. Green. Green and red. How nice that's coming out. See that? You can even throw some higher ones up, you know, like it's... Nice. Oh, it's making a noise. We don't want that noise, do we? We don't want any distractions. Perfect. Now I got a really nice deep green but now I want to add some highlights to this all right so let's add some highlights so I'm just gonna now you can wait for that to dry and add highlights so you can just do it as this so it'll all blend together so I'm just going to take that and do that and I'm going to tap on some of these yellows on top Just so that I can get kind of different colors. Now you can change brushes. You don't have to do this. Change up your brushes if you have to, if you want to. All right? I'm just tapping on some of my yellow. So my brush is dirty. My palette is dirty. I'm, I'm going into my colors that I mixed before. You know, just so I can. Look at all those pretty colors. Look at that. And I'm bringing them up a bit so that they look like maybe flowers or something going on there. I don't know. It's so pretty though, isn't it? Bring them down a little bit here. But I'll leave the bottom a bit dark because that's where there might be shadows and stuff. But up here I'm going to let that float up on top there like that. Nice. Now I might add some white. I'm going to add some white to get even, even brighter again. Okay. Use whatever, as long as it's a bristle, it doesn't have to be round, it can be whatever, it can be flat, it can be, it can be a fan brush, you know, you can use a fan brush to get some nice, some nice things going on here, you know, like this. Just move your brush around a little bit. You have to experiment. I mean, you might say, well, you know, I'm trying to learn from videos and even going to classes and everything, but you know, a lot of it is in your own hands. You have to play around and see what comes out. And you have to play around your brushes. You have to play around with everything. So that's a pretty nice foreground, isn't it? Now I'm going to take my liner brush and I'm going to bring up some taller grasses. I'm going to drag it through the yellow and the green. That way, or even some blue, that will turn green. Right, so blue and, and yellow makes green. So I'll just run it through the, the yellow and blue, and then I'll switch it around and I'll add just yellow. Let's see if what happens here. So pull up some of these taller grasses, and if they won't brighten up, put some white on there just to get them to move. Okay. Nice bright grass, and, and if it won't move, make sure you add some water to your. I just added water to my brush, and then some white because sometimes it's hard to get that nice bright color. So 
So we can get some nice bright green down there. That'd be really nice. So some nice tall. There we go. See? All these little details will make your painting more interesting because people will be looking at it. So for our composition, this is what we were working on. So our composition is the hills and the grass in the front and then we're going to add the little girl looking out over. So we'll do that after. Just the last step. Okay, she's the last step. Everything else we want to decide. We want more trees or we want more grass. Get all that done first. Alright. Get a nice liner brush. Get those grasses on there. So I'm just going through the white and the yellow and the green. Nice. So you can put whatever flowers you want down there. So we put all our grasses in that we're till we're happy with it. Yeah, and nice thin ones. You get thin ones by adding more water, and you've got to have a really thin liner brush. They're hard to come by sometimes, you know. And you barely touch the canvas. It takes practice. Even I, like you can see, I'm struggling to get them on there without having them too thick. But I need a thinner brush. I want a bunch of those grasses. I really like I really like layering paint. You see some of my videos, I layer, 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 layer. I just continuously layer, you know, trees or uh, leaves and things. Love layering things. Paint that is. All right, so I won't keep you too long with this one. So we got some nice grasses there, and some nice colorful flowers going on, and grass, and you know, there's some grass sticking up here. Good. So I'm thinking maybe a small, you can barely see the trees coming in. Now that could be tricky, but I'm going to try it anyway. So I'm going to take a small flat brush or filbert or whatever, and I'm going to use my burnt umber. So I got some burnt umber here, right there. I'm going to use that to get trunk. Let's see, let's see, maybe there's some. This could ruin it. But how am I going to know unless I try? So say the trunk is back there somewhere and there's some branches hanging out. And they're coming out through the side here. Okay, so I'm just going to have a little, some of the branches coming out from, because maybe the trunk is way over there somewhere. So I don't want to do too much with it. All right, and then I'm going to pounce on some so I'm just going to get a small bristle brush so I can have a little more control and I'm going to go into my greens but dark greens okay so I'm going to go into some burnt umber 
and some blue and some yellow or you can use um, you can use a sap green if you want to so I'm just kind of mixing in what I already have there I won't make mud because I'm just using the colors I'm using so I'm just going to tap on some As if there's a tree hanging out here, see? Right? So you just tap that on. That those branches will give you some idea of what way you want to make them. Alright, so you got some trees coming out here. Just to give it a little extra interest, okay? You know, there's no reason why. You gotta think about when people are looking at your paintings, what do you think they'd be interested in? What would they like to look at? You know, what are you gonna give them to look at? Looks a bit better. I'm not sure. I think I might need a little more here. You can shape up your tree whatever way you want. Trying to get trying to get a better shape. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see, let's see. Thinking that maybe this one should be a bit thicker. Maybe more round and nice big old tree sticking out there. That's better. That's better. I think that's better. It gives it a better shape. Like it's just sticking out there. Like it's, it's over on the other side, but it's, it's hanging out there, right? And that's good. And then we will add some highlight, which is your yellow and your white, depending on how bright you want your highlight. Now, because the sun is coming in from the right, there's not going to be a lot of highlight on that side, but we are going to put some there, just so that we can see the shape of the tree, all right? I'm just tapping on a little bit here and there, just to get a shape. See that? Just by not going all over the tree, you get that nice shape. All right. And then we're going to have the girl over here. So that will balance it out then, right? But you can have, you know, bush or tree over there if you want to. We are going to... So I'm going to add a few little white flowers to finish off that so that when I decide when I put there we go some little daisies or something just to give it some extra touch 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 and touch 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 a little bit a little bit so you can start by going here, on both on, on the two sides, and one there if you want to. Just these little almost butterfly flowers. Just touch. Using a filbert helps. It gives you the shape so you don't have to be all day struggling with a shape. See, you just boom, boom, and boom. Bump and bump. Simple as pie. And then you can take your the back of your brush and just stick in a little center piece there. See? Just make things easy for yourself. That's all. Just make things easy. And then we'll put the girl out now after. I think 
I think that's enough of that, and I think I will put the girl on now soon. I think that's good for now. We got any other extra touch-ups we can put them on after. There we go. So now we're going to put on our girl. And I have it taped on, and I traced it onto my canvas with carbon paper, okay? I don't mind using carbon paper. I can cover up the lines with paint, all right? So you can get carbon paper at any of your copy stores, maybe even at Walmart, I'm not sure, but uh, you can get that basically anywhere. And uh, so then I traced it on there, and now we have the girl to work with. So let's get started on that now. So you can use a small flat brush or a small filbert. I'm going to use my small flip filbert and I'm going to add a little bit of white to that yellow to brighten it up a bit because I like to have it a bit brighter. And besides the yellow is a bit transparent. So I'd like to have, have it thicker so it, because I'm painting over this land and all that stuff it may come through. Now you can also put the girl on first and work around it or you can put the girl on first and use masking tape or you can use masking fluid um, and that way you'll be able to preserve your girl I'll do a video on that one these days where I'll put an object maybe an animal or a person on a painting first paint do the painting first of the person or the animal and then I can tape, protect it so that I can paint over it without it destroying what I did. So I'll show you how to do that. I also, there are three or four different ways you can do it. I'm okay with this way but it may not work for you guys but I like for you to have different ways and different techniques to do it. See, so this is still transparent so you can add more white and then when that dries you can do a second coat. I'm going to use a smaller brush. You can use a round or a small flat or whatever works for you. And I'm going to use 
the darker yellow so it won't be so bright as the dress. And I will lighten that up now after with a highlight. Now I lighten it up after with a highlight. Now I'm going to put black in the hair. So I'm just going to go with pure black for now. And I'm just going to use a small flat brush. Now we will continue on with the skin tone because I'm going to wait for that to dry. I could use a hair dryer, but ah, uh, let's see, let's see. Get a small flat brush. Synthetic. small flat synthetic brush and start with white as I showed you my recipe for skin tones I can leave the link to the skin tones if you want and then I add a little bit of yellow not too much yellow see just a little tiny bit a little tiny bit of red okay so that's a nice skin tone and then a little bit of burnt umber or burnt sienna whatever you got there or brown. Let's wait until we get what we're looking for. That's nicer there. There we go. I want it to be a little bit on the pink side because she is a bit pinkish looking. That's nice. We can always add shadows later. So just keep adding the colors until you're happy with it. There's only those three colors. You can add blues and greens and things too, but be very, very little. And like I say, uh, and like we say, we're going to need two coats because you can see through this. It's transparent.
Oh, so let's go with her bow and her hair first. I'm going to add some white and yellow together just to brighten up that yellow and so I can brighten up some of the some of the uh, bow. I'm just going to dab it on, tap it on so I can keep some of the under underpainting. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of red to that. Give it a little more shadow. And some white and yellow again for the other side. Leave a little space in between there. Just dab it on, just like tap. That way you'll get to keep some of the shadows and then it will look like a bow. A little more white and yellow to brighten this part up here. It's a little dull. Try to keep a little space there. A nice little bow in her hair, see? I'm going to add a little Good. more touch ups here. A little bit of bright yellow. Come outside there a little bit. Just using a liner brush. Use the smallest brush you have. Just to shape it up a little bit, that's all. All right, that looks cute, doesn't it? A little bit of white there. Right, now we got to make more. the hair stand out. All right, and we got to fix it up a little bit around here, I'd say. So let's go with our black. So, so still using the Liner it's brush here coming down. I added burnt sienna to my black. Look, just having these little streaks of hair coming down here like this. Okay. Just give it a natural look. You don't have to be exactly like mine now. You can make her hair whatever way it falls. You can make it fall whatever way you want it to, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. It's just little bits of hair that's that's there. Make it a little bit bigger up here so it thins out on the bottom. There we go. All right. Now, this part coming down here, we're going to add... I think we're going to add, take clean your brush. We're going to add some blue, would you believe? Blue. So we're going to be going back and forth with some blue, a little bit of white every now and then, and some burnt sienna. Now just watch because this will help you make the hair stand out more. So this is where we're going to end it. Uh, let's see, let's see. It comes out through here, and then it comes down through here. Let's get the edges. Let's get the edges and then the top, okay, and then the edge again. I want to get the shape of the hair proper. Just keep adding some streaks, all right? Make sure you keep some of that black. If you lose your black, just put some back, okay? That rhymes. If you lose your black, put some back, all right? So as we're coming down here, as you can see, isn't that pretty with a little bit of blue coming out of there? Can you see that? So if you can't see it, I'll add a little bit of white to it, okay? And you can do the same, lighten it up. You can't, can't see it well enough. Make sure your brush is a bit wet because it's a little bit difficult to move. And our acrylics dry really dark. <laughs> yep, they give you a hard time. So coming down here, and we're going to add a little bit down here, probably just 
some blue, not as much white. We don't want it to be a blue here, you know, even though that's all the style. We do want to be able to see it though, especially the edge. Just going a little tiny bit here. I'm not going to add much. Straighten up that now with the black. I'm going to go in with the dark brown now. Clean your brush. We're going to add some burnt sienna or burnt umber. If you got burnt umber, add a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, add a little bit of black to it. If you got burnt umber, you can add a little bit of um, yellow to it, brighten it up more. Now, this will help you get the shape of the hair. a little bit of color to the hair and you want to add a little bit of white to your brush so we can make that pop out a little bit don't worry that will fade in that will fade in or you can just go over a little bit till it fades in there we go a little bit of hair sticking out there Pull that down into the bottom so it doesn't look like it's too separate from everything else. I'm going to clean this up over here. So I'm going to go in with some burnt sienna. Clean that part up there. Add a few more streaks here so you can see them. I had to do a couple of layers to get that going there. I'm going to go back into my black so I don't lose too many shadows. Clean up the edge. Now you can see it, right? So I still think we should add a little bit of lighter color here so you can see. I'm just going to add a few little streaks of white on my dirty brush just so that I've got some different colors on there. So you play with her here until you get what you're looking for. Basically you're trying to get it to stand out so you can see it. Right? You want to be able to see it. So little bits of light color, whether it's the blue or the burnt sienna or brown or black, uh, black with a little bit of white, make it a kind of, we don't want gray here, but it'll give it a, a like a highlight, a highlight without being too bright. So I think we'll leave that for now and if we need to tidy it up a I'm bit more. I'm going to use the same will. brush. Okay. And I'm going to take some of my green and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it to brighten it up a small bit. It's nice green, isn't it? Get a green that you like. Don't have to be exactly like mine. I get a lot of people saying my colors are not the same as yours. They're not going to be because it depends on the brand you're using. It depends on your mixture that you're using. You know how much you mix with your paint 
other colors. It's almost impossible for you to get the exact same colors I'm using, okay? So I'll tell you what I'm using, but if you've got to mix them, make sure you don't worry too much about it being exactly like mine. You get close, that'd be great. But if you're looking for an earth green, just use your green and add a bit of red to it and it'll come out nice and earthy. So we got a bit of green there. I'm going to add some green here. So for your grass, you can add a little bit of red to, and your trees, and add a little bit of red to uh, give it an earthy green. Red is very dominant, so start with very, very small amounts, okay? A squiggly line there because I want to give it a bit of shape. So we go up and down, up and down, up and down. Good. Move. Just go a straight line if you want, but uh, get a little bit of squiggly lines in there, that'd be good. Nice. Now we got to put some shadows in the dress. I'm going to try my flat brush for this. It's a synthetic and it's a chisel edge so that we can, you know, paint this way, okay? It'll be more this way. So let's give it a shot. So for her dress, we can try, we can try different colors actually. We're going to start with yellow because that's the color of her dress. And we are going to... Start with yellow and mix in a bit of what? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. Try burnt sienna. There we go. That's a nice shadow. You can add all kinds of colors to it, right? That'll, if you add blue, you're going to end up with green. So a little bit of burnt sienna, a bit of yellow, just to darken it to get some kind of shadow here. And we'll start here. All right, so we got we got some pleats going on here too. I'm just going to put this in first just to decide how many what kind of shadows I want. So for now I'm just going to figure out how to approach it. <laughs> how am I going to approach this? I don't know. So it looks like we get some shadows going on. All right, so we got some pleats. All right, and then we're going to have some shadows up here. A little bit here and a little bit. There's not much on that one up there. Some shadow going on in here. All right. So already you can see the pleats and everything. Now we got that established. So don't, you don't need to do anything else. Only start adding the color around that. Watch. So let's go and brighten up in between those shadows. I'm going to use pure white for now. I could change my mind. Okay, just using white. Just in between where I just did it. Just some sun shining on there. So That's good. Now I'm going to go with some pure burnt sienna. To 
add a few more deeper shadows right here. It'd be nice if that was wet. If it's not, then wet your brush and do more of a, a glaze, which means the brush is wet. See how wet it is? And then, see all the water coming off? And you add your burnt sienna to that. And that would be a glaze then, instead of pure paint. That way you'll be able to see the paint is underneath it. Now if you're going to do that, make sure your paint is dry. Alright, so that might be a bit too wet, so be careful. Use your finger, if you have to. If it's too wet, tap off the excess water into your tissue and go back at it again. Just trying to establish some nice little shadows. All right, that's enough of that. Except for over in that corner. Here. It's almost like watercolor, isn't it? Now we're going to clean that up. We are going to take a bit of tissue. Just like that. I don't want to make it too complicated for you because I know so that clean that up and last step is to go back in with some yellow add that here Just kind of going over everything. Just trying to make sure it's dry, okay? That way you can So it's like it's going back and forth. Just adding some white for highlights. So when you get Some white on the edge here. On the edge here.
take some burnt sienna and make some little pleats going up. This will give it kind of like a some little shadows here. So the easiest way to do it is to start off with your yellow first and then put some shadows coming down and then the light parts in between. So you get shadows, light, shadow, light, shadow, light. A little streak of brown going here just to show that it's curling and touch up your shadows in between your lights. And um, Doing shadows on clothes is not that easy, but it's not that hard. It's, you know, it's easier to draw. <laughs> but anyway, let's try the skin tone. So we will go with a small flat brush or filbert, as long as it's small. I got a filbert here and I got a flat, so I might try both. First of all, I'm going to try the filbert. I always start out with a little bit of white. And then I add a little tiny bit of red on the corner of my brush. There we go, we got pink. Pink, but I'm going to add a bit of burnt sienna to give it more of a flesh tone. So that, that one's good. So now we'll take that because we need a second coat and use as much burnt sienna or burnt umber that you need because you might have a different tone of skin. Depends on what color you want. Okay, so we got dark skin. Use more burnt sienna or burnt umber to darken it up. Because there's so many skin tones, if you look around you, you know there's lights, and darks, and mediums, and all kinds of colors. So skin tone, when you're doing it, is good to have a basic recipe, which I have a basic recipe, which is my white, and then add a little bit of white first, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow if you want, and a little bit of burnt uh, umber, burnt sienna. I like burnt sienna. And that's your basic. Then you can mix it to how light and how dark you want it. Just get the basic done first. basic color and then I just added burnt sienna if you got burnt sienna burnt umber whatever works for you all right there's a shadow under her leg here might need a little bit darker so I might go with the burnt umber gotta have it really dark in order for it to stand out all right but as it comes over, it lightens up, so clean off your brush. 
and then just move it over. And then don't don't put any more paint on your brush and there you got a nice shadow, see? Then you do the other leg. Do the other leg. It's pretty shadowy too. It looks like burnt umber would be the best for that. Or brown with a bit of black added to it. That has up here. And then it's a lot. So we're going to clean off our brush again. Clean all the paint off. I'm just wiping it off my tissue. And then I'm going to boy. Then I'm going to move it around. That way you don't get too much, right? You can move it around and smudge it out. If you get too much, clean off your brush again. Just wipe it off as you go along. And as you especially as you're getting further down the leg. See how that blends it out nicely? That's a good little shadow, isn't it? That's good. Now, it's a little bit of a shadow down here. That's that. So I need to lighten this up a little bit too. I think that comes down a little bit further. Make your adjustments. Don't be afraid to make adjustments. If all else fails and it gets really bad, just paint it over with the basic uh, skin tone again, alright? I need to make that look like it's bulging there. So use the shadow down there and then we will go back to the skin tone again. But I'm going to add a little bit of white because there's a, sh a highlight on her leg. I'm going to send you the picture of the girl that I'm going by, okay? So you can have a look and see what you can do yourself. If you're a total beginner, you might find the shadows on the dress a little hard by yourself, so I might do that dress again in a separate video. So that's a nice little shadow there, isn't it? Now I'm going to add, get my skin tone again. And I'm going to because that there looks like you can see through it almost. Down here. So this hand over here has a bit of highlight on, so I'm going to go back and get some white and add that to my skin tone, and then that will brighten that up, so we'll get a little bit of highlight here on the edge, and on the inside. Yeah, if you've got the uh, reference photo, you'll find it's much easier. Not easy doing portraits and skin tones and things. You might see some videos on skin tones and things. Check them out and see what, you know, check out several different ones. That way you'll be able to get an idea of what way you want to do it or what's the easiest way to do it. I'm trying to make it as easy as I can, but it's a little tedious. Because there's so many highlights and shadows, I didn't realize when I picked out the picture, but I love the picture so much, I said, you know, I'm going to take a chance on it anyway. That's what life's about, taking chances, isn't it? <laughs> oh boy. Take a chance on a painting. And we got a little bit here. These are highlights. Just using chisel edge my brush. Scrubbed it in a little bit there without using any more paint. Scrub
probing at the edge. Good, and I'm going to add a little bit of burnt to umber to my brush and go in here to darken it up a bit more. Little hands there. Just add a little shadow in there, that'll make it look like her hand. A little bit on the edge here. Try to get the shape you're looking for. And then you got a little bit of a wrist here. I'm gonna have to shape that up in there. That doesn't look right. So I need more yellow in there, so I'll fix that in a minute. So that comes in this way. I'm just gonna scrub at that edge there. If you scrub at the edge, that'll smooth it out, alright? Don't put it too much paint on your brush, just wipe it off. And we have a little bit of a, a little bit in here. And we also have a little bit of an elbow here. So it's starting to come to life, isn't it? You know, with all these nice little shadows and different things that are going on. A little bit of white to give it a highlight here. Right. clean that edge up here now for you. I made a mess there. I'm going to take out my liner brush and I'm going to go into a little bit of black. And I'm going to put that back there. And there's a little bit here. And there's some here here. Good. Take a bit more burnt umber. Burnt sienna, see if I can shape up her hand a little bit better. Bit of better. Anything like a hand, you can leave it, right? It's an illusion. Don't forget that. It's not doesn't have to be a perfect hand. It'd be nice if we could. But I think you're painting And we have another one over here. Hands are not easy because they're kind of weird looking sometimes. It's our fingers there. The shadow comes in here. Comes out towards the edge there. Add a bit of white to move it around. It's a bit of highlight here.
If you look at the reference photo, you'll notice that, you know, even as a real picture, it uh, the hands always look kind of strange. So this is the reference photo I got from Pixabay, okay? So you can see where I'm trying to get those shadows and trying to get, you know, it's not that easy. I'm leaving her feet in the grass. There's more grass here. I don't have the fence in, but she's overlooking a big... So I love the sky. Valley. I'm not going to touch the sky. But I'm probably going to add a little more color to the hills there. I'm just going to take my fan brush. And I'm going to... Let's see, let's see. What color did I use? I use, uh, well, always use the, most of my blues are ultramarine. And I might add a little, and some white. And that looks pretty close to the color, doesn't it? And get more white. What do you think, Bob? What does Bob think? I love this. You can get that on Amazon. That's where I got mine. If you want to, I got a link there if you want it. Right? I mean, he's so encouraging. And um, it also came with some beautiful little came paintings. With these, this little. I mean, look there. <laughs> Isn't that cool? All these paintings and everything on it. It's gorgeous. I think it's on sale for six something. I'm not sure. I paid 12. But um, US, right? But I always think there's a big pile of them there. I'm not going to show them all to you. But um, I love it. I'm, you know, so I'll leave a link for that. And also, my granddaughter bought me this for Christmas one year. And look at that, Bob Ross. Oh, look. I think I got, to, I think I got a link. And that gives you all his sayings. Let's look at those. Oh my. my! It takes my breath away when I look at his paintings. Once you have the technique down, all you need is a dream in your heart and the desire to put it on canvas. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I love this. I'm not sure. I think that's $12 or something, right? I mean, it's so nice to have. I even have Bob Ross sweater that my, my granddaughter Desiree gave Here's me. Here's the sweater she gave me. It's gorgeous. Desiree knows what I likes. Desiree knows what I likes. Now, I don't know if I got that in Amazon shop. I'll ask her where she got it, and then I'll see if I can get the answer to you. All right, but this is gorgeous. There we go. It's my Bob Ross I stuff do for today. Painting tutorials by Bob Ross. And I got a couple on my YouTube channel that uh, I show you how to do Bob Ross painting in acrylic because he does oils and I show you how to make my magic white because he uses magic white for oils and I made a magic white for acrylic so I'm uh, I guess I'm a little obsessed with Bob Ross <laughs> but you know and I you can see my techniques too are coming from from learning from, from him I learned that was the very first person that I learned how to do some techniques and it make encouraged me inspired me to learn to paint that was way back in 2000 or so right so and i'm still at it so i'm just adding a bit of white to the blue mixture that i made and i just want to get a little bit of i don't know some, some kind of a i'm just using the corner of my brush and i'm not going over all of it i'm just going here and there just to give it more shape and more interest Not doing very much. Just give it some interest. See, you can change shape a little bit too if you want to, right? See that? Isn't that cute? That's nice, isn't it? You don't even need to use a you don't even need to use a palette knife. I'm using basically the corner of my brush, leaning more towards the corner of my brush.
Hagen a ish yara kisr ma kisurok. Kind of brings them out a bit more. I'm going to take my liner brush and see if I can add a few more grasses there just to lighten them up a bit. Well, thank you for painting along with me. I hope you enjoyed that painting. And if you did enjoy that painting, leave a comment below in the comment section. Let me know what you liked about that painting. What part of that painting did you like? What was your favorite part? And if you have any questions about brushes or paints or anything about the painting itself, just email me at alisonpryor at yahoo.com or leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video.